Welcome fabricators. I've been working with the product group on something really, really amazing since the beginning of the year. And at Microsoft Ignite, we announced Microsoft Fabric SQL Database, uh, Fab SQL, if you will, to the world. And that's what we're covering today on Tales from the Field. It's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Fabric SQL Database, Fab SQL, if you will. I'm gonna get that trending is here and it brings the power of OLTP workloads and multi-concurrent connections of SQL Server to Microsoft Fabric. One of the amazing things, there's well, actually there's so many amazing things we can do with this. We could make this an OLTP database. We could make this a data warehouse or a data mart to be able to scale out concurrent connections. We can get our data very quickly within the security context of our Microsoft Fabric workspace. And we get a mirror. There is so much to this product. It's absolutely amazing. By the way, if this is your first time finding your way over to Tales from the Field, give us a like and give us a subscribe. We drop content on Mondays, Tuesdays, or Wednesdays. Uh, today is Wednesday. It's an MS Tech Bits. So we are here to talk about technology, specifically Fabric SQL Database. And I got to tell you, I don't want to talk about this. I want to show it to you. So let's get over to that great content. All right, I'm in my fabric tenant and I'm gonna select new item, SQL database preview. I'm gonna name it something simple, exactly what I want it to be, AdventureWorks LT, because we're gonna use the sample with this. I'm gonna provision the new database. As you can see, it starts up in seconds. Let me get rid of this warning on my trial. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to get my sample data. Let's go ahead and click that. It's gonna load. This may take a couple minutes. I fast forwarded through this so we can just get right to it. But you can see now I've got my cells LT schema and I've got my tables listed. If I expand this, one of the nice things is just like we've got in Fabric, now I've got it for Azure SQL Database, I can click on a table and boom, I get an immediate appearance. I get a preview of it. So there we go. There's customer's address, customer address. Uh, we've got a lot of great things. Also, we've got Copilot. So let's go click get started. And this is the same experience that we've got in Microsoft Fabric. Let, let's ask a question. I want to join uh, a my customer, my customer address, my address table together. Give me that query. And boom, there's a little fabric magic right there. We get a nice query. Let's go ahead and grab that. Let's make a new query, paste it in. And as you can see, the query editor also has Copilot intelligence in place. Well, fantastic. I, I returned this just fine. It's quick. It's what I would expect for a SQL, but let's go over and let's monitor replication because we are mirroring all of this database into our Microsoft Fabric workspace. And I can see there's my tables, there's a great count, everything's looking really, really good. So now let's kind of test this out, right? Because I always get the question with mirroring and with replication that we're doing, how quick is it? So let's create a table. I'm gonna create a table, my table one. It's gonna be a very simple one, my ID, identity integer, one uh, over one. Uh, so that way we're gonna increment by one every single time. My char, char 50 default of A, my viral char default of 500, but I've only got about seven or eight Bs I'm replicating right there. I'm gonna create that table and now let's do a loop and we're gonna insert about 500 rows. I'm gonna say declare I and declare X both as int values. I'm gonna set I equal to zero and X equal to 500. We'll do a loop, we'll insert 500 rows. I'm gonna say while I is less than X, we're gonna have our begin and end. I love the intelligence just popping up in here. And then I'm going to say insert into DBO my table one default values. Didn't know you could do that, did you? Uh, and then I'm going to increment my loop. Otherwise, it'll go forever. Set I equal I plus one. Let's go ahead and run this. And again, the performance I would expect from SQL Server within seconds, I've got my 500 singleton rows in place. I expand my DBO schema. I can see there's my table one. But let's go check out the replication for this. When I look at replication monitor, I can see my table one, the scheme is already in place. We don't have any records just yet, but that's probably coming pretty quick. As a matter of fact, if I go up and I refresh, let's see, boom, more fabric magic. My 500 rows are already there. Fantastic stuff. Okay, so we've got this, but let's say I want to take a look at this, but I don't want to look at it in the fabric interface. I want to look at it in SSMS. 
So I need to get my server name and then I need to get my database name. Now, remember, there's going to be some nuances to this server name. We're going to dive into that a little bit later, but this is our read write connection to our database. And I'm going to come in SSMS dark mode. That's right for 21. I'm going to put in my server, but here's the thing for the database, because this is Azure SQL database, we are authenticating directly to the database context. So I need to go to the connection properties. And then I need to put the database name with the GUID that we saw associated with it. When I hit connect, this is my database. This is my read write database. I can come in here. I can see because it's the context, I only have my single database that I see and I open up my tables and my tables are in place. There we go. There's everything from the sample data all the way down through to the table I've created. And I can run my quick query over here, select star from DBO, my table one. And just like I expect from SQL Server, lightning fast, this comes back. Okay, now let's head back over to Microsoft Fabric because the next thing I want to look at is I really want you to understand the objects that we have in place here. When we provision a SQL database, we get a semantic model and a SQL analytics endpoint, but it's a little bit different. There's also some amazing features we can access, get refresh, open query, performance summary, restoring a database, managing permissions. We are going to get all to, uh, we are going to get all over these in later videos. But right now I want to focus on these individual objects because there's a semantic model and a SQL analytics endpoint. And this is a concept that we really, really have to understand. I'm going to start out by going to settings and I get my SQL endpoint. And it is the SQL endpoint I use for my lake houses, for my data warehouses. And if I go back over to SSMS, I can punch this in, but I want to see the differences here. The previous connection was my read write connection. This is my read only connection. So if I minimize our read write connection, I come look at our read only connection. I can see there's my lake houses, there's my data warehouse, but there's my AdventureWorks LT. This is not the read write copy of the database. This is the mirror. And this is very important for us to understand because we are automatically mirroring this data into Microsoft Fabric. I can go ahead and I can select from this. My 500 rows are already there. My data is already there, but it is key for me to understand this is the mirror data. So what do I want to run off of this? Well, I want to run on my analytical workloads. I want to offload my read write report or my read only reporting on this but I want my read write, my application interface to go to my read write connection. So very important that we understand the differences between these two, because this is going to be key in the way that we are utilizing this. As a matter of fact, let me paint you a picture. If we look at these objects, the thing I want you to keep in mind is there is a mirrored database in here. The semantic model and the SQL analytics endpoint come from the mirrored database. And then we have our database where everything is derived from without our Fabric SQL database, Fab SQL, we don't have a mirrored database. And without the mirrored database, we don't have the semantic model or the SQL analytics endpoint. So these things are really, really key. But at the snap of a button, we've got a database and we've got the capability to be able to stand this up and use it and have this data auto replicated to our one lake in Microsoft Fabric. This is absolutely massive. And I'm so excited about this. You know where we want to keep this going down in the comments. So sound off. Are you excited about this? Have you worked at all with Fabric SQL? Are, are you playing around with it? What are you looking at doing? There's so many things I can think of. Uh, metadata databases to be able to do metadata driven frameworks for our pipelines and ETL and Microsoft Fabric. We've got data mark capabilities. We've got the capability to have old TP systems where we can reconcile that data immediately into Fabric. Uh, again, kudos to the team working on this. To Quan uh Anna Hoffman, Dave Levy, uh, Drew Skewers Kabala, uh, so many wonderful folks at Microsoft working on this. Great job. And I can't wait to hear from you about what you're going to do with Fabric SQL Database. Don't worry, we're going to have more videos on this to come. All right. Thank you so much for joining us on Tales from the Hill. As always, be good to one another out there. Bye, everybody. Good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day.